Um, but this time when we're dealing with a uh, string gauge that's in a pure bending state. So we have a cantilever beam right here set up. We're going to apply some load. Uh, hopefully you remember your e-bend expression uh, from your mechanics uh, of materials courses. Uh, but again, we're going to get to that uh, a little bit later. So let's just keep it general in terms of positive bending or negative bending to begin with. So if I have the following uh, string gauge configuration, uh, I only have one string gauge, so these all go to zero, as we've kind of seen previously. Now the question is, as I bend this beam, so I have this beam that's in initial state, and then it's going to go to the state where I like to call, as we did in class, the banana state. So just highly exaggerated where you know, you know, we have just essentially this banana. So if I place a string gauge on the top here, kind of imagine it here, if I place it here, again, it's strained in the material, this string gauge on the top, if we're bending in this direction, is going to elongate. So if my string gauge is on the top, it is going to be larger. Again, it's going to elongate relative to kind of my initial state right here, to my final state. If I'm here, again, just, you know, you could kind of take in a, a, a banana and we're going to do this at home. Um, but if you look at the, if you place a string gauge here, it is going to be compressed relative to this state right here on the bottom. So here, we just have the scenario where we're in pure bending, uh, string gauge on the top, so my strain is just uh, positive bending. However, if I'm in a situation like the one below, let me go to the next page, um, where now at the four, it's at the bottom, so now I have a situation where my E1 is positive, my E4 is negative, and this leads us to a very difficult, or actually very kind of uh, important problem when we're dealing with strain gauges, which is we need to orient these strain gauges, strain gauges correctly in order to kind of measure a strain. Because you can see here, my E1 equals EB, my E4 equals minus EB, my delta V0 over VI is equal to zero. And that's not the case, obviously. We're, measure, you know, we're, we're deflecting that material. There needs to be some output voltage. But the way that we've arranged our strain gauges, that's not the case. So you could kind of imagine a scenario. I have a cantilever beam, and I'm bending here. If I have a full bridge configuration, in order to kind of order these properly to measure some strain, I need to have 1 and 4 here, and 2 and 3 here. Because my E1 will be equal to E4, which is equal to EB. My E2 is equal to E3, which is equal to minus EB. And that's going to lead to this expression of delta V naught over VI equals F EB. If I don't have this configuration, I could get the same scenario where it might be equal to zero. So uh, that is kind of some of the many permutations and different ways that we can kind of arrange strain gauges. Um, but we've neglected an important parameter here, and that is uh, basically the linear thermal expansion coefficient uh, and that contribution to strain. So we'll get to that in the next video. Thanks. I'll see you next time. Bye.